the prevention of early onset neonatal group B streptococcal disease. Green Top Guideline number 36. Second edition, July 2012. Background. Group B streptococcus or streptococcus aegylactae is recognized as the most frequent cause of severe early onset at less than 7 days of age, infection in newborn infants. The incidence of early onset neonatal group B streptococcal disease in the UK in the absence of systematic screening or widespread intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis or IAP is 0 0.5 over 1,000 births. The UK National Screening Committee examined the issue of strategies for the prevention of early onset neonatal group B streptococcal disease in November 2008 and recommended that routine screening using bacteriological culture or near patient testing techniques should not be introduced into UK practice. Antenatal screening. Should all pregnant women be offered bacteriological screening for group B streptococcus? Routine bacteriological screening of all pregnant women for antenatal group B streptococcus carriage is not recommended. If group B streptococcus is detected incidentally earlier in the pregnancy, should women be treated before the onset of labor? Antenatal treatment with benzyl penicillin is not recommended. Antenatal prophylaxis with oral benzyl penicillin for vaginal or rectal colonization does not reduce the likelihood of group B streptococcus colonization at the time of delivery and so is not indicated in this situation. Intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis should be offered to group B streptococcus colonized women. Should women be screened for group B streptococcus or receive intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis if group B streptococcus was detected in a previous pregnancy? Current evidence does not support screening for group B streptococcus or the administration of intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis to women in whom Group B streptococcus carriage was detected in a previous pregnancy. The time interval between the two pregnancies and the intensity of colonization in the previous pregnancy are predictive of recurrent Group B streptococcus colonization. Reducing the risk of neonatal Group B streptococcus disease in women known to be colonized with Group B streptococcus. How should group B streptococcus bacteriuria in the current pregnancy be managed? Clinicians should offer the intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis to women with group B streptococcus bacteriuria identified during the current pregnancy. Group B streptococcus bacteriuria is associated with a higher risk of chorioamnionitis and neonatal disease. This women should be offered intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis. Women with GBS urinary tract infection or growth of greater than 10 to the 5th power CFU per milliliter during pregnancy should receive appropriate treatment at the time of diagnosis as well as intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis. Should women receive intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis if group B streptococcus is detected in the current pregnancy. Intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis should be offered if group B streptococcus is detected on a vaginal swab in the current pregnancy. Vaginal swabs should not be taken during pregnancy unless there is a clinical indication to do so. If group B streptococcus is present in a vaginal swab, it is likely that the risk of neonatal disease is increased. A risk of disease is 2.3 over 1,000 may be assumed. 
how should women with known group B streptococcus colonization undergoing planned cesarean section be managed? Antibiotic prophylaxis specific for group B streptococcus is not required for women undergoing planned cesarean section in the absence of labor and with intact membranes. Women undergoing planned cesarean delivery in the absence of labor or membrane rupture do not require antibiotic prophylaxis for group B streptococcus regardless of group B streptococcus colonization status. The risk of neonatal early onset group B streptococcal disease is extremely low in this circumstance. How should women known to be colonized with group B streptococcus who experience a spontaneous rupture of membranes at term be managed? Immediate induction of labor and intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis should be offered to all women with pre-labor rupture of membranes at 37 plus weeks of gestation or more. If group B streptococcus colonization was identified earlier in the pregnancy by a swab taken for other reasons, immediate induction of labor and intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis should be offered. How should women with group B streptococcus colonization and suspected chorioamnionitis be managed? If chorioamnionitis is suspected, Broad spectrum antibiotic therapy, including an agent active against group B streptococcus, should replace group B streptococcus specific intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis and induction of labor should be considered. Chorioamnionitis is known to be associated with maternal and neonatal morbidity, including sepsis, neonatal lung and brain injury and cerebral palsy.